On this episode of NSFW Show, we dig up an old treasure. Secrets are BS. Me and Brian unite to see if we can't get beguiled by the chat realm. Furthermore, ruin them. It's real and it's fantastic. Find out how you can buy it and how we are going to hoodwink the world with the tales of this devilish brew. It's all coming up on this edition of the NSFW Show, which The Simpsons did five years ago. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 189, recorded on July 30th, 2013. Cheese Weed. This episode of NSFW is brought to you by ProXPN. ProXPN is a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet the way it should be. Anonymous and unfiltered. For 20% off your new account, go to ProXPN.com slash twit and use the code NSFW. <laughs> and just like that, it is go time for NSFW, the new show for the win. New sauce for the Webernets, show that's nominally safe for work. Hello, beautiful party people. My name is Brian Brushwood, hanging out with a billion freaking diamonds raining from the sky, along with my BFF, Mr. Justin Robert Young. What is going on, Professor JRY? I'm doing the blind man shuffle, Brian. The blind man? Is that now? Did that come before or after the Super Bowl shuffle? And can you uh, talk about whether or not one was a ripoff of the other? Uh, uh, of course, the Super Bowl shuffle fell into a lot of legal challenges because of the blind man shuffle. <laughs> uh, the blind man shuffle, all you have to do is put on sunglasses yeah. and then shove your palms in the air indiscriminately. <laughs> but you have to say, do it what? like you don't care. You have to be like, like I really, I, I can't see what I'm doing, so what do I exactly. care? Exactly. It feels now good to me. Now reach for a stair railing in the air and wave them like you just don't care. <laughs> Hey man, uh, d- I can't see things. <laughs> you, oh, and now you can, just like that. Ah! And now, <laughs> but a miracle! <laughs> ah, I have been gifted with sight. Uh, well, hey man, cast those golden orbs onto uh, the fact that ruin them shipping today, bro. Look at that. You can see the freaking foiling on there. Is it? It looks totally legit. I guess because it is totally legit. We, uh, Brian, we are actual, um, I mean, vintners, sure. is that, uh, wine barons. We are, uh, well, and, and by we, it's not just you and me, cause let's face it. You and I didn't do the heavy lifting on this chat realm are the, you created a, a thing. You created a wine to destroy the world. And, uh, I believe yesterday, the day they were shipped, uh, the blue rhino propane factory exploded. Somebody send me yeah. the link. Did you see all this stuff? It was like, no. it, was, it was exactly like, and nobody died. So first of all, anyone's been like, you shouldn't be laughing at an explosion. Screw you. Hey, it's beautiful. Uh, excuse me. There were a lot of shrubs that burned. <laughs> I really don't appreciate the fact that you're laughing over the pain of shrubs. <laughs> I'm the guy who takes everything too seriously. So, <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Whistle in the chat room is saying two days before his ship, my house burned down. Which is like that's that's the thing that scares me the most that that our our signature have a good day of die in a fire might suddenly be terribly terribly inappropriate. I'm glad you didn't uh, die in a fire though. Whistle. I know. Well, maybe we should change our um, change our tag uh, on on the outro to to live long and be- prosper. Order a pizza. <laughs> Order a pizza and enjoy it responsibly. Uh, this, and then maybe, uh, holy smokes! I know, right? It's like it looks like a freaking video game level. Like this was I've played this, and you shoot it, and then it it blows and and hits the bad guys. You got like dancing wow. propane things flying all over the place. So those are propane tanks that are flying out into the wilderness. You'll, there, huh? You'll, you'll never guess what state this happened in, Justin. Uh, Florida. What winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> Man, Florida's got a lot of crazy things happening in it. <laughs> that's uh, that's kind of our thing. Uh, did we ever so share we on go. the show? Did uh, we ever share on the show? Here, Brian, let's just do it. No, put that back on. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. 
Hold I'll on. tell you what, Brian, it really makes me think of ruin them. <laughs> what, ruin them? Tell me about ruin them. Well, Brian, way back in the olden days, and I do mean at the birthplace of the modern civilization, the Roman Empire, ruin them was introduced. It, well, it was because this kind of blend of a honey wine was very popular. Uh, what, whatever happened to... Uh, Whatever happened to Roman Empire? They're doing all right. Not aren't they? so good, Brian. We don't like to talk about it because it went downhill. And boy, did it go downhill fast. Now, I'm not saying Ruinum was the cause, but it's also been at the at the center of a lot of other uh, dangerous, uh, horrible situations. Well, okay. Well, we know for a fact that uh, that this happened the day it was bottled and shipped out. Uh, that seems like yes. a very. In your practically your former backyard of Florida, which just seems yeah. weird. We know that uh, seems a little bit symbolic. Also, the first time that we um, brought it out to Nerdtacular, a uh, plane crashed in SFO, and uh, I had to drive back. Uh, listen, we're not saying this is haunted. We're saying it's available on sale now at <laughs> ruinum.com. <laughs> shipping, and it is a fact that that this that this type of cocktail was very popular right before Prohibition. That's what that's what started the whole idea of branding yeah. it as Ruinum, right? And and that it was popular during uh, during ancient Rome. You know that these are are unassailable facts. Well, here's what we need to do because right now when you go to ruinum.com, it's a very sparse uh, about me page. That uh, first of all is fantastic artwork uh, put together by Josh. Uh, he did an amazing amazing job on it. It looks great. Uh, there's a few words kind of describing it, but that's just about it. And a link to pre-order. We need to have a place to put the lore because while we've had a blast telling all these stories and the backstories and everyone we tell them to is like this is a yeah. great idea then somebody asked you who asked you today so where do i go to read all these stories <laughs> and you're like uh, well i was i was at the go game and and so here's what happens friday uh i i get the call from steve who works at california shiners he's our partner in all this it, it without him number one like the seeds for this and and the and the mechanism by which this happens never moves like it's because he did Mangria with Adam Carolla that he has the infrastructure to kind of give us the platform to turn it over to you guys to build this crazy mythology uh he says listen I'm bottling all this stuff up on Friday come on up so that's where I got all this video uh of of the bottling and everything uh, I got a case and I immediately went out and gave it I gave you know Leo and Lisa a couple bottles I gave this is Sarah Lane's uh bottle right here I was just just giving them out, go down to the go game, and I'm telling this story over and over and over and over again about the lore of Ruinum. And Gabe, who is putting, he's our tech guy at the go game, is like, this is amazing. My friend is a huge Roman history buff, would love this. Uh, where can I send her the link? And, <laughs> and I'm and like, you're like the, 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 the what? The, uh, for what? He's like, that awesome story you just told. Where can I send people to, to read about what you just said? You're, you're like, uh, I mean, like, you want to know my phone number? Or like, yeah. so she could call and I could tell her? I, I can I, give you the hours for which I'm free and just have her <laughs> call me. Uh, oh, man, we got a photo here from Chimera of a verified... Uh, fact that Ruinum was the drink of General Sherman as uh oh it's well yep yep there's a photograph you could definitely see he's got uh he's got Ruinum right there in his hand boom there we go so hey, that's, listen that's what we need to do right now is figure out which of these facts are canon and first of all all the stories are true and that's that's we all know they're true but there's only a well, few of them that we could put on the official website you know, here's the thing, Brian, is it's uh, really, especially when you're dealing with fallen empires, oftentimes it's the records that's the first to go. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's hard to kind of piece together exactly what things were like in the final days. So a lot of this just sort of gets lost to the sands of time. I'll tell you but, what. Uh, Let's do Popular this. folklore is popular folklore. Let's open up the lines. You guys tell us which bits of, of the Ruinum history. It's NSFW show on Skype. Go ahead and call right now. Audio only. Please don't send us any video. Uh, we'll throw you on the air. We'll listen to it. And we'll declare that it goes in the actual doc or not. Um, and, and first of all, uh, here's, be... here's the one thing. I, I gave this out on Friday, and I got some instant reviews over the weekend, including one from uh, uh, Ian, the co-founder of the Go Game. Uh, who said he got through one glass and was like, whoa, we're there already? <laughs> like, we're at, we're at that level of, of drunk? Holy smokes. And then immediately had another. That's amazing. All right, caller, you're on the air. Who are you? Hey, guys, Zombie Jesus here. Hey, Zombie Jesus, Yay! what's going on, man? Uh, Hold much, on, man. Zombie Jesus, wait a minute. Whoa! <laughs> 
What are you saying, man? Well, you know, I think one of my favorite s- stories about Rotom is a more modern one about it. Uh, like what? Well, you know, everybody's heard about Enron and all that. You know, those guys were drinking that before Enron fell. Well, that was before it was even publicly available. So they had to like really, uh, they, they must have had their own, it must have been very expensive for them to make this formulation. Exactly. Well, when you have money like those guys did, you can get whatever you needed or wanted whenever you wanted it. Uh, I'll tell you what. So here's what I Can't think. Can't argue we, with that. Here's what I think we should do, Justin. Because we can't make a Wikipedia article on ruin them because they'll take no. it down because it's like man it's not a real you know meh. we're all about facts i mean again we're Ryan, Wikipedia. the corporate run media is not something that uh, these stories will find a home well if uh, you know what if you go you're just gonna see a creepy photo of uh, a personal appeal from what's his name saying please don't send us ruin them stuff and so, uh, uh, Jimmy Wales, of course, took me a moment. Uh, but the, uh, sorry, founder of Wikipedia. But here's what we could do. Can't we set up like a Wikia? Like, like isn't there a anything goes Wiki thing so that we could have a series of facts that's all about ruin them? And then maybe the website can give some of the highlights from the Wikia, but then we could just I mean, open listen, that up. Push comes to shove. I'm sure we could probably just uh, put a new coat of paint on a BBpedia page and just call it. Winia or whatever. Yeah, let's do that. Let's let's uh, let's just take it to the BBpedia. Start filling it out now. We'll flesh everything out, and then we'll we'll figure out which of those to copy over onto the main Ruinum page, and then the rest, all of it, the apocrypha, uh, will all be there waiting for us. Tess is on the line. What's going on, Tess? Hey, um, you guys know the story of uh, Galvarino, right? In um, the 16th century, he was one of the famous uh, Mapuche warriors who uh, fought against the Spanish in Chile. Uh, I know uh, about him now. Well, well, I mean, anyway, uh, obviously, the- I mean, I know uh, what everybody else knows. <laughs> well, obviously. We're as but versed anyway. as anyone else you'd run across, I think. Anyway, he um, had both of his hands chopped off by the Spanish. He went back and he uh, strapped knives to his forearms and went back into battle. Is this a real thing? It's a real thing, Galvarino. Um, oh but you know, you know, Chile is famous More for its like red Galva wine, right? Awesome. Yeah, right. Chile is famous so, for their wine. Yeah, of course. In right. fact, that's in fact, him, it's you know, rumored Ruinum is what gave him the strength to go back into battle. I'm almost certain that at least some of the grapes came from from Chile. At least I heard that. I could have sworn that that I heard that at some point. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, I think that's something that needs to get out there. You know, it's gonna give you that strength to go right back into battle. It's a good point. Good job. That's I mean, good look, work, uh, we Tess. can't again. It, it was it just part of popular folklore that Galvarino was indeed drinking Ruinum right before. Another popular folklore is the Eastern Island heads is what your face looks like after four glasses of Ruinum. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think we can vouch for that one. Uh, all right, JC's on the line. What's going on, man? Hey, I my my favorite story about Ruinum is that it was found in the. Uh, the Texas Book Depository, where Lee Harvey Oswald was. <laughs> See, that's it. That seems that seems unlikely that that a wine cocktail can turn someone into an assassin that would kill the president. And I think I think it's important that we take this rumor head on. I think we squash this rumor, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. It was Mangria he was <laughs> drinking. <laughs> Yeah, we, there we go. We fixed it. Great, great job. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we'll we'll fill out that uh, BB Live uh, show. So here, yeah, look info. at this. We have we have right here all these uh, civilizations: Samaria, Babylon, Assyria, the uh, Indus Valley civilization, the Hittites, the Greek states, the Trojans, the Macedonian Empire, Egyptian kings, Phoenicia. Dude, all of Kingdom this of needs Mactan. to go, go into the official the official Ruinum uh, Wikipedia page at bbliveshow.info. Uh, we got Jeff on the line. Jeff, what's going on, man? Uh, Brian, I believe that uh, Ruinum is what caused the Alamo to fall because <laughs> Sam Houston got drunk up and didn't come rescue the boy. Is that is that really what happened? Is that what delayed Sam Houston uh, and then he later... Like, like when he was well, saying, "Remember the Alamo," he wasn't well, like a battle I think cry. Jim Bowie was drunked up too, and probably uh, all the rest of the boys. Drunked. Up. See, Ham- Sam Houston was actually saying, uh, "Remember to pick up my ruinum. I left it in the Alamo." Well, <laughs> yeah, I think he forgot uh, where think- the hell he's supposed to go. Actually, that- he probably, he probably headed towards uh, Houston instead of San Antonio. <laughs> that caused him kind of a Kind of a messed up deal. 
there. That's that's what they called it at the time. The massacre of everyone at the Alamo. They say this is kind of a messed up deal. Yeah. Uh, well, you can just see uh, that in in, in, in the Ken West, Burns. Anyhow, you know, and then. Uh, Gotta, oh, that ain't right. I gotta, so. gotta move on, but I'm afraid to let Jeff go. <laughs> He's amazing. All right, look, call back anytime, Jeff. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, you can just imagine in, in like the Ken Burns history of Texas, it's like uh, it was an event that would forever be known as kind of a messed up deal. <laughs> Hey, uh, I'll tell you what, at any time, uh, you've gone pixely again, Justin, so feel free to call back uh, uh, and and we'll reboot it. You want to take a moment and thank our our first sponsor, though? Uh, Yes, Brian, I would like to thank our first sponsor. Uh, That is, of course, Pro XPN. Dude, Pro XPN is the jam. Super, super simple VPN. You know, it's like I'm I'm, just as a hygiene thing, man. It's like I I don't trust nobody no more. There's leaks. People are leaking wiki leaks all over the place, and it, and I don't want to, I, I don't want nobody. I want my name on none of that. So I'm gonna just encrypt everything. VPN. I'm gonna I'm gonna well, use. It. All right. Here's here's the deal. Uh, DefCon is happening uh, in the next uh, couple days. Yep. They're in in Las Vegas, Nevada. All you got is a bunch of people talking about how they are ripping stuff out of the internet off public Wi-Fi's like nobody's business. Our friend Mitzula who works uh, in the sports book uh, at the Rio yep. and all the other, uh, whatever that proper, that parent company's properties, says that he has to go out and just be the good Samaritan to all the normies who are working in the in those hotels and be like, hey, listen, uh, turn off your Wi-Fis, for God's sakes, everybody, Wi-Fi off. Wi-Fi Hackers, off on your phone. Hackers everywhere. Guys, he's like uh, he's Paul Revere. He's like, there's a bunch of damn hackers around, running around just shouting it. Now, you know what? He wouldn't have to do that if everybody used Pro XPN. Because what you what you get with Pro XPN is a 512-bit encryption tunnel wherever you are. You can be on that public Wi-Fi, and they're not going to be sneaking all up into your beeswax. No, man. They got an encrypted tunnel they can't screw with. You can't, man. And you could and it don't even matter. Like, okay, granted, maybe they'll maybe they'll take a year of using a supercomputer to crack it. Good luck. Goodbye then, you'll already be on to other capers. You won't even remember what they're talking about by the time they get around to decrypting that crap. Here's the places where you can use uh, Pro XPN at work. Sick of work, snooping all upon what you're doing, trying to make value judgments on the websites you look at over hey, and over and over again before going to the bathroom? <laughs> Guess what? Pro XPN, right in your wheelhouse, baby. Uh, also, it makes your internet connection region free. You want to, let's say you fall in love with an Irish talk show and you can't watch it on the internet unless you say you're from Ireland. Guess oh. what? <laughs> Top of the morning to you, sir, because now <laughs> your computer is Irish as the day is long. I'll tell you what, that goes two ways. Every time on Frame Rate we have a story about Netflix, they're like, we don't have Netflix here. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that, you, you know, v- VPN, you could be anywhere. All right. World-class customer support. You don't believe me? Go ask Steve Gibson. Look up Steve Gibson's personal address and walk up to his door and ring the doorbell and ask him, yo, bro, what do you think about Pro XBN? He's going to tell you it's a treasure. He gave it a glowing review. So go ahead and look that up. Google Pro XBN Steve Gibson. Find out what he thinks about it. In fact, forget I said to go to his house. That's probably not good. <laughs> Just look up what he said on the internet. You're going to get the same thing. Go to ProXBN.com slash twit for more information and sign up. Pro XPN premium accounts are normally $9.95 a month or $74.95 for the entire year. But tell you what, we got a special offer. Use code NSFW to receive 20% off the lifetime of your account. Dude, it comes out to like five bucks a month. That's amazing. Five bucks a month is like nothing for the safety that you get. I'll tell you what, if you're not satisfied, and I'll tell you what, if you're not satisfied, I'm not going to say you're an idiot, (laughs) but you're, you're an idiot, okay, if you're not satisfied with this service. You can cancel it like an idiot. Within seven days for a full refund. Go to proxpn.com slash twit. Sign up with the code NSFW. We like to thank ProXPN for their support of NSFW. All right, here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click your hang-up face and, and have uh, uh, you guys call me right back. I'm going to bring uh, on the line, though. We got... Uh, hey, buddy. What's going on, man? Hello. Yes, Brandon. You're on the air. What's up, buddy? Oh, my God. It's my first time. Good yes, for you. I've been hearing all these 
rumors about Ruinum and I can just say that they're all not true. The true rumor is that if you have a beard, you will gain the powers of Superman and you will be able to destroy the world at your will. <laughs> oh my god, that's that's a bold claim. Uh, now, I, I thought no, that's that all was, true. Prove uh, it's not true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't. I can't. Uh, you're right. I I don't have much of a beard, so I probably probably couldn't do that. that Neither do I. Uh, do you think? Do you think that uh, maybe uh, DC might not like uh, uh, stated claims <laughs> about a liquor? <laughs> uh, uh, Brian, <laughs> the first defense against libel is truth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, I'm going to get branded off before he gets us in any more trouble. Bring April on the air. What's going on, April? Oh, hey, guys. What's going on? Oh, my gosh. It's it's Viking Lass. How are you? Yeah. Viking I'm Lass. I'm pretty drunk steep. I biked home and didn't die, so I'm kind of proud of myself right now. What what I happened? I, uh, I ended up at a gay bar tonight, and I got really drunk with a bunch of gay men. I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> And so I thought I'd stop in and say hey, and apparently we're telling stories of what Runem has destroyed. Yeah, yeah. No, I love. I oh, love okay. <laughs> First off, Runem um, destroyed the capillaries in my face and made me no offense, uh, Schwood, I love you, but uh, it made me pinker than Schwood. That's, kind of wanted to bring that back. That's a fact, Sorry. actually. Yeah, and you said it's it's the what? It's the sul- sulfates or something? I'm allergic to like sulfites or something delicious that's in Runem because it's delicious, but did, it ruined. But you didn't even allow. You didn't even let, let your physical allergy to one of the ingredients keep you from enjoying the velvety smooth, oh, dangerous hell taste. No. Are you kidding me? Oh, that is amazing. Are you really? Which, wouldn't you die for something that's great? Like I put my liver against something that was great and I survived and I loved it. Oh my god, that's oh amazing. so good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks, April. Drop it, you know. Uh, all right, we got uh, Chris on the line. What's up, Chris? Hey, uh, you guys remember the Carter administration? No, never. Uh, vaguely, that, that uh, was the one. John Carter from Mars administration, right? <laughs> nope, nope. Where nope. he went so to here's Barsoom something a lot of people bored don't realize. For two hours. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Um, in 1979, at the start of football season, yeah. the president's brother, Billy, was sitting there in front of the couch and just kept swigging those Billy beers. Okay? Yeah. Around middle of October, the supply of Billy beer in the White House ran out, completely dry. The cook had to go around and looking around for something for the president's brother to drink, found a case of ruin him. Started drinking that ruin him. One month later, embassy takeover in Iran. <laughs> wow. Man, that is, 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 is the causal relationship, you think that there was foolhardy decisions being made by the president at that point? Uh, the president and his brother, yes. <laughs> Especially his brother. All right. Right on, Chris. But <laughs> uh, you should have put that in the doc. Hey, Brian, real quick, before we uh, before we keep going, uh, I'm getting like a crazy echo from you. Is there anything that you need to reset? Yes, thank you. Uh, I needed to mute my microphone on you. There that, that we go. That should be all better. I, we, yes. We've never had to, to, to restart your call mid-show. No problem. No problem. Ryan, what's up, buddy? Ryan, not talking hey, to us. Hey, what's up, man? I couldn't hear you on Skype. That's all right. What's up, buddy? I just wanted to say I'm going to be in the Marriott at Dragon Con, and I'm going to tear that mother up with ruin him. <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Can I say, like, I legitimately am uncomfortable with how often Ryan, uh, who is, uh, to put it to uh, put it uh, accurately, a, a heavy drinker, uh, he keeps yeah. talking about how he wants to be buried when, with the ruin up, like I'm not comfortable with that uh, with that talk for as tongue in cheek uh, no, as we Brian, are. No, Brian, and you know what I do when I get uncomfortable with that kind of talk? <laughs> what do you do, Justin? I go to ruinem.com <laughs> to see what all the fuss is about. Yes, Brian, ruinem.com <laughs> is where you can buy exclusively oh bottles God. of this delicious beverage. You've heard of all the damage that it's done to civilization, but find out for yourself <laughs> if it really is the devil's own drink. <laughs> ruinem.com. Ruin your night today. <laughs> it is pretty good, man. Uh, all right. Well, let's. Uh, what else is there? Um, uh, so we got. We so got- here, here. All right. So here's the call to action. Yeah. And by the way, do you realize that one year ago today, we launched a little project called the Diamond Club? Oh my God! Has it already been a year? It has been one year since we put it on sale. Uh, so this is 
the the you know uh, we we've always kind of referred to it kind of softly as like it's a a soft a spiritual sequel to the Diamond Club, sure, the Ruinum sure. experiment. Um, so uh, BBpedia, there's a Ruinum page. Somebody set up a Ruinum page on BBpedia, and let's edit it together. We're going to link that to the Ruinum site, and that will be what people will know uh, of the lore of of Ruinum. So keep in mind, this is for the normies. So for everybody who wrote in the Diamond Club book, understand that it can't just all be references where it's like, and then the Hittites said Tom Jigglestocks is our leader <laughs> and <laughs> Bottomus Wind is our god. That actually sounds like, pretty awesome, though. <laughs> it's got to be, it's got to be, uh, keep it as legit as possible, right? Yeah. It's got to it's got to look super legit. We'll put it on the Ruinum official site so it's like, you know, so we'll have a link there that says collection of lore associated with Ruinum, you know, by scholars and uh and then feel free like just just flesh it all out. Tell the whole story uh and make sure to self police and and you know, like like have an eye for quality. We want this to be a a rabbit hole that people find themselves descending into just out of curiosity with Ruinum. Uh but uh at this point, Justin I feel like uh, this is a big moment. We're gonna take. We're gonna bring back a game we haven't played in a hundred and thirty or one hundred and seventy episodes. Okay. Uh, the, is that really how long it's been? I I don't think we've played Secrets or BS since uh, since the the like the fourth episode, the one with Veronica Belmont on. No, it. we have to have played it since then. I I can't remember when. Um. Man, I, I don't I'm know. I'm sure we have. All right. Well, here's the way that uh, I'm sure it's been a while, but uh, oh man, here we go. Yeah. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna play a little game called Secrets or BS, where we ask people to put together a little collection of secrets or BS. People are calling BS on your claim that we haven't played it since episode two. Uh, well, <laughs> that is not a secret. Well, let's somebody somebody's gonna tell. No we're saying yeah, episode forty three we did it, but I'm sure it's been a while. I know, I know we haven't played it uh, recently. Yeah, one hundred and forty five episodes. Fine, God, God, whatever. Uh, but uh, in this case, we collected a bunch of secrets from fine members of chat realm. Uh, Justin, which one do you want to hit up first? We have uh, ooh, the, the, even who they're submitted by is secret. So uh, you have, pick a number between one and ten. Uh, I'm gonna go with three. All right. Number three, coming up right here, submitted by. Do you want to know who it's submitted by or just have it be secret? No, just roll with the story. All right, done. My first job was out of high school as a cook for an upscale pizza place. I liked the job but hated my managers. They were the laziest managers on the planet and basically had me doing all their work for five twenty-five an hour, which is, I thought, what bosses were supposed to do. They wouldn't hold anyone up to sanitization standards, and the mail manager would regularly hit on underage girls. One day, I had enough of it all. I put in my two weeks. My last day there, one of the managers left early and told me to make sure the place was clean before I left. Instead, I didn't touch the walk-in and called a tip into the health department that I had food poisoning from the place. They apparently came in the next day and were heavily cited for their disgusting habits. To this day, I still use one of the other managers as a reference when I get culinary jobs. They have no idea that I was the one who got the place shut down for two weeks. What do you say, Justin? Secret or BS? This is a really good one. Yeah. Because if it is BS, it's a very... Uh, Plausible. It's... But it's also because well, yeah, it doesn't overreach, you know. Like it's not like, and then uh, the health inspector came in, and my one boss was banging my other boss, and then right. they both started puking because <laughs> um, they were drinking Ruinum. Woo! <laughs> ah, Brian, I'll tell you what, you can save that kind of talk for Ruinum.com, <laughs> available in shipping right now from Napa Valley, California. Uh, uh, all right, I'm gonna say that this. Is uh, true blue, Ethel. I think it's a secret. I do. I, I agree as well. I think it is a uh, secret. First of all, this one was submitted by... I can't uh, reveal it. I'll do copy and paste. Nope. I will have to... Nope. It says totally anonymous. Uh, here we go. Is it a secret or BS? Shut up! It's BS, bro! <laughs> Man, 
People have gotten better at this game over the uh, intervening 140 episodes. Oh, I'll tell you what, man. We, uh, I mean, we definitely have, have created a culture. Look, we, we've we made a, an army of, of little mischievous criminals out there doing all, uh, teaching. If they're good enough to fool us, hopefully they're good enough to fool the world. Oh my God. Uh, well, all right, listen, I feel like this this was a warning shot, right? This is like we're sitting in the batter's box. We think that we're going to see a ball right down the center of the plate, and this one comes right an inch from our nose. We know who we're playing against now. Yeah. All right, I feel like we're going we're gonna to roll these next couple ones. All right, well, now, I'll tell are you. We, are we collaborating on these? Yeah, let's just go. Uh, well, we'll just pick our own, uh, you know. Uh, I think we should. Let, let's, let's collaborate on it, because that way we can have a definitive yes or no, and I can play a sound. Okay, good. So it's all us right. first chat round. I like this. I, I like, we're on the same team. Team. We're not fighting each other. It's good. All right. Secret or BS. Uh, this is the first one that came in. It says, when I was eight uh, years old. Yes. Okay. Yeah. No, go ahead. Read this one. Uh, when I was eight years old, my family went to a cheap remote motel slash fishing resort in Canada. The resort basically consisted of motel rooms, gravel, and boats, and a large body of water. The caretaker for this resort was a bit touched and believed that the U.S. and Canadian government were trying to spy on him via the electrical lines that converged over the lodge and resort. His wife was basically making sure the boats worked, cleaning fish, taking care of his gigantic chow chow who terrified me. It's a good detail. The dog would constantly chase me, bark at me, and generally thought I was the worst child on the planet. One afternoon, the dog was lying around on the gravel parking lot chewing something. I decided to venture out to the water to catch some minnows when the chow started chasing it. It was then that I realized exactly what the dog had in its mouth, a large fishing knife, deer antler handle in its mouth. The dog chased me around the parking lot with me screaming, knife in mouth, and tail wagging. My dad ended up wrestling the knife out of the dog's mouth, laughing at me the whole time to this day. I'm still terrified <laughs> by chow chows. Secret or BS. Ah, uh, man. Bry. Yes, sir. This one smells like a pile of poop that was laid there by a bull. So oh, you think it's BS? Because here's the thing. It's, it's just boring enough that I want to believe it. But the no, last one was boring I, enough. That one was extraordinarily boring. Uh, this one was working a little too hard to throw in as many details as possible. Like the crazy guy who thinks that the Canadian government's spying on him. Like, and then it's not even about him, you know? Like it's about this dog with a knife in its mouth. Do you want to find out uh, who wrote it? Would that affect it at all? I guess we really shouldn't uh, know. Um... We just got to cut, Brian, I'm trying to convince you this is BS. What makes you think it's true? Well, uh, you know what? There's no, this is, every time we ever do this game, that's my biggest mistake is I was like, oh, seems legit to me. I believe everyone. I'm the trusting magician who gets walked on by everyone. So I'll go with you. I'll say fine. And then what? It's you try to spin a huge uh, wheel and get grabbed by a gigantic dog and your torso <laughs> becomes yes. elongated? Exactly. All right, here we go. Secret it's or- It's a little Steamboat Willy joke. We go deep on this show. Be Secret or BS. Shut up. Freaking secret. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. You were so convinced. You were so well, sure. Also, I, it's so pixelated here, Brian. So you have to tell me that it's secret or BS because I can't see it on okay. the screen. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got, you got it. Sorry about that. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's definitely, it says the word secret. Uh, I'm totally legit. All right. That's garbage. I swear to God. This is not actually a secret. That didn't happen. Canada is uh, not that interesting. I'll tell you what. Tess. Call us up, Tess. You got to defend this one. Call us right now. We'll throw you on the air. I'll tell you, I'm going to cut off my hands in protest and come at you with knives. <laughs> First, I just got to finish this bottle of Ruinum. Delicious Ruinum. <laughs> it's a 20% alcohol by volume, same as Listerine. Uh, all right. Uh, so, all right, Brian, listen, we're over two. We only got five of these. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not so good. That's not so good. Uh, that means we got to get all of them right. Let's do, here we go. Tess is on the line. All right, Tess, defend this. It's totally true. I was at a fishing resort and this dog terrified me and was chasing me around the parking lot with a knife in its mouth. Now, okay, all of that, okay, fine. So what do you think that it was going to do? Stick you up for your wallet? It's a dog. It's got it's stuff in its mouth it's all the time. It's a giant dog with a knife poop. in its mouth that's chasing me when you're eight years old. <laughs> 
So, okay. Well, and actually, as the, as the father of a nine-year-old girl prone to panic in moments of high stress like that, uh, I could totally see just becoming terrified of running off in circles. Uh, but so tell me this. When you wrote this one, how much of this, like, did you... We're, like the whole reason Justin wanted to call Bolt on it was because you were just running a bit too much for how little we were, you were being chased in it. Like all these weird side details. If it makes you feel better, I spent most of my day today writing a statement of purpose for my um, for my admission to graduate school. So I may have been a little verbose today. All right. Well, <laughs> no, that's legit. Good going. Where are test. you going to graduate school? Dog Knife University. <laughs> Yes, I'm Home of uh, the running a major knife dogs. in uh, dog knifeology. <laughs> All right, thanks, Jess. All right, uh, this one, Secret of BS number two. Uh, by the way, hey, listen, uh, uh, stories are piling in right now to bbliveshow.info slash ruin them. Uh, in 1898, sailors aboard the USS Maine were drinking Ruinum in keeping with the highest traditions of the Navy. However, when the drunk sailors started playing with fire near the gunpowder, Ruinum accidentally caused the start of the Spanish-American War. Remember the Maine when you go to Ruinum.com. <laughs> now shipping from Napa, California. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, just to, somebody, somebody posted in the chat, I forgot that uh, Chat Realm had made this uh, this website for Ruinum with all the animated gifts and the <laughs> and the awesome Yahoo. Uh, Rob four six three two says that whole last uh, story was possibly inspired by just a splash of Ruinum in the dog's bowl. <laughs> <laughs> just one drop was all it took. Ruinum, not even once. All right, here we go. Submitted by anonymous. After a heavy night of drinking and getting into a huge fight with a bunch of other guys at my buddy Don's bachelor party, we all retreated back to our hotel room. There were four of us in the room. I was one of the unlucky guys who had to just pass out on the floor. At about five in the morning, I woke up on the floor covered in my own urine. I then proceeded to take my pants off and hop into one of the beds with my buddy Steve. He woke up and felt all of the wetness and was pretty pissed. We joke about it to this day. I like that date. I like that little jaunty ending. We were like, and we were friends ever since. Pea buddies. So wait a minute. <laughs> what you're saying is <laughs> that you fell asleep on the floor yes. because there wasn't enough room in the bed, pissed yourself, at which point you decided it was time to share your piss with your friends, and jumped in the bed, despite removing your pants i guess you still had residual pee somewhere on you and it wet the bed that's uh yeah yeah um not sure i follow the the logic behind all of it you know what i'm gonna can i make it just a random that one's guess? too dumb to be fake i uh, yes and specifically i'm gonna go for a double i'm gonna say it's real and that it was mega vortex oh my god it was mega vortex <laughs> You're on deck, Ryan. You have to call in. Now let's see if it's a secret or... I, it's secret, right? Uh, well, we're about to find out. It says it is a secret. It's a yes from me. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm sure Ryan will call any second now. So uh, no Frack says, is that dumber than uh, jaying off with your friends? Yes. <laughs> I feel like that story has not one, but three happy endings. <laughs> Mega Vortex, what, what is going on in your mind that's like, I'm covered in pee. I got to rub it on my buddy. Well, uh, it was pretty wet where I was laying. Um, I wanted to move to dry land, basically. <laughs> so wait, you, could, you, you do think... understand that dry land was also anywhere else on the floor you didn't pee, right? I mean, also... Well, not at five in the morning. Uh, but my friend Steve, he he seemed a little cuddly. So, <laughs> yeah. Now, we, it didn't occur to you to take take a shower. Not at that time, sir. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way Thank it's a you, deposition. Yeah, it's like uh, this is like the uh, 
Zimmerman trial. Not, oh not at that God. time. All right, you're out of here. Right. <laughs> Brian, I'll tell you what. I was like, he said, not at that time, no, sir. And I'm like, that's a great ending line. And I said, thank you, Ryan. And you're like, no, Ryan, follow-up question. And then he went right to the George Zimmerman okay, trial. Uh, this is why you need to cut bait. This is all before he even gets a hold of ruin him. That's the scary thing. All right, here we go. We got one TV here. TV Egon says, dry land is not a myth, jury. <laughs> I've seen it. Okay, this one, the so first now, listen, sentence. Listen, we're, we're tying it up, right? We get this, we're tied up, we go to the yes. uh, the, the tiebreaker. To the bonus round, yeah. This one, uh, the first sentence has me thinking that it's a lie. Uh, my boyfriend of several years wanted to make things interesting, so he ordered me a nurse costume over the internet. After it arrived, I'm pretty sure this is just a chapter of the Diamond Club somebody sent us. After it <laughs> arrived in the mail, I got dressed and headed out with him to take a drive around town around 3 a.m. and ended up at the local university football stadium parking lot. So we made use of the nurse costume and sat in the car for a while talking. I also brought a small bag of marijuana and a pipe in my purse. After about 30 minutes, an SUV charged directly at us from the other end of the very large parking lot. Then I noticed the police lights. I was dressed in a nurse costume and had a dime bag in my purse. Two university police officers walked up to the car and took one look at me and told us to get out of the car. They proceeded to question us both separately about what we were doing. Obviously aware that a couple just might be having sex if a nurse costume is involved late at night in a parking lot. We both denied that, of course. <laughs> And the cops asked permission to search the car. <laughs> then I noticed one cop opening my purse. I thought, great, I'm going to jail in a nurse costume. Fortunately for me, I had inside my purse two slices of Kraft Singles, which I had intended to use on my sandwich at work that day. The cop looked at the cheese, looked at me, looked at the cheese, put the purse back without noticing the illegal substance underneath. They then told us to leave the parking lot and find some other place to be. We thanked the officers and drove away. Sliced cheese saved me from going to jail that night. Thank you, Kraft. <laughs> Boy, and I think Kraft this should... is the greatest challenge we've ever had in the history of <laughs> secrets or BS. It's, I know, right? It's so far out there. I mean, I, I, I've got the same disease as always. I want to believe it's real. No, say it in the voice. What? what which voice? The trusting magician, oh. Steamboat Willie voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I just look at this one. It's, it's too weird not to be true. I just feel like... Uh, no, Brian, it is BS. <laughs> I don't trust anyone. <laughs> oh, come on. Who would make up a story about craft singles? Craft singles are about as old American as they get. It's too fantastical to be real. <laughs> Behind, there is no sense in going to a lot and not having sex in nurse costume. <laughs> yeah, that's the real problem, is the fact that it just says, well, naturally, we, since we had a nurse costume, we decided to go to a parking lot with me dressed as a nurse to fool around. Like, that part makes no sense to me. Um, I, I, I'm calling BS on it. Um, you are, I don't have a strong feeling, uh, either way. I've got, I kind of feel like okay, this uh, is just, just cause this, it's really not that crazy of a story. Well, right? Yeah. Okay. But like the oddest thing about it is the nurse costume. This is the part that doesn't make any sense. He, so he ordered me a nurse costume after it arrived in the mail. I got dressed and headed out with him to take a drive around town around 3 AM and ended up at the local university football stadium. Like, she didn't say we went out for a crazy night on the town and, and finally it got to be 3 a.m., so we were making out. And it sounds like, and if, if, if they're in a mature enough relationship where he's ordering costumes for her over the internet, then why are they not doing it in an apartment? Why well, would they? I mean, I don't know. Some people get off on that, like, ooh, I'm gonna make you dress up like a nurse and then parade you around. Like, that might be like a thing. I mean, I think I think it's BS. Even 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 I think it's BS. It can't be. I mean, because also it comes into like like so they're in a parking lot and they're doing whatever and maybe even like talking is kind of a euphemism, right? Let's just even assume that. Sure. Like the idea that they get busted and they have weed on them because they don't say they're smoking weed. They just have weed and also cheese. It's a cheese and weed situation. Good old cheese weed. Know. That was my favorite band in the in the late nineties. <laughs> cheese. Oh, weed. dude, man, I saw cheese weed open up for uh, Our Lady Peace and the Smashing Pumpkins. Oh my God, and they're like, cheese weed. 
uh, Cheese Weed and their hit single, Nope. <laughs> no officer was was the chorus. Uh, yeah, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna call BS. I'm gonna call BS. It's gotta be BS. All right, I'm with you. I'm riding with you. I'm I'm saying BS on it. Now, my, meanwhile, we have to get this right, or else we lose to chat room. Oh, I don't want to lose to chat room. I really don't want to lose to the chat room. Uh, okay, it is. Shut up. It says it's secret. I don't believe it. I don't. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. You lose. That can't be. You lose. That's you okay. lose. Who? Okay, who sent this in? And that person's going to have to call. Uh, it says anonymous. Whoever this anonymous caller is uh, who put it in, give us a call, NSFW show right now. We're throwing, it up, throwing you on the air. Because I'm, I'm calling it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you have to. We have to have a cross examination, an inquisition. Into I mean, this. like it, it seems. Uh, it just seems uh, to be too weird. I, I, I agree. guess it's. I mean, look, we've got we've got three, four more, so we could. We, oh, I thought we only had five. No, 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 no. We've got four. We can, we can. We can. Let's do a lightning round. Let's just come. Let's just see if we can come back on this one. All right. Uh, all right. People have been asking for accents, Brian. You yeah. want to do an accent on this one? Sure. What, uh, uh, or do you want to read it, or do you have the doc open? Uh, if somebody can throw me the doc, I can do an accent on it. You can either get uh, Brian the Trusting Magician or, uh, or Pati- Postini's brother, who, who believes everything is BS. <laughs> or, or, or Vagina Paul. Or the Somebody's got it. Oh, here we go. Okay, there's the lock. There <laughs> The gumshoe. Uh, all right. This one here. I'm just going to read this really fast. Uh, I was so drunk on S-wordy wine once that on my way to watch Canada Day, July 1st fireworks at the lakeshore with my friends, they decided it would be a good idea to have me to leave me less than four feet away from the train tracks on the way to lakeshore. To make sure I wasn't robbed, they put a pile of crap on me. Old bicycles, broken stuff, pretty much anything they could find near the train tracks. At one point, I regained consciousness about two feet away from a moving train. I had rolled over in my drunken sleep. I slept for nearly three hours until they came back to get me. Secret or BS. So fell asleep on train tracks? Uh, four feet away from train tracks. So I guess I guess uh, he was so drunk that he sort of collapsed. And they're like, hey, it'll be fine. Let's put this crap on him. That'll be funny, too. Not realizing that he could roll around and, and get dangerously close to the actual train tracks. Uh, I mean, this seems legit, right? Yeah, I think it's I think it's legit. Secrets. We're going to secrets. And it is a secrets! All right. All right. So this one. Uh, uh, All right. Here we go. Uh, number six. I want you to read it. I want you to read it as a teenage girl who uh, hates math. Okay. Why did you get your math text? I'm in your contact. Uh, all right. Here we go. My best friend from high school used to enjoy being the guy that always got the laughs. So we're driving down on the highway to see a sign for a hot girl that says, We'll suck D for grilled cheese. Her friend's there to do it. My friend's, let's call him Billy, takes her to a Denny's. They hit it off. Needless to say, two years later, they're engaged. Best story to tell your kids ever. Algebra sucks. Uh, man, this this also suffers from the crime of being so boring that there's no reason it couldn't be. Uh, I mean, this is not. I mean, listen, this is a funny party story. If you met if you met Bonnie, because at some point you were driving around and saw her holding up a sign that said "Will suck D," and yep. believe you me, the D is filled in uh, in this. They did not just say D; it said what the D meant. Yes, for grilled cheese. I mean, I I, I would say I'm, I'm gonna say. I'm going to say this is BS, mainly just because we haven't seen enough BS ones. Can I ask you a question? Can we put a pin in this and just have a larger conversation? Yeah, go for it. Like, would, I actually, scale, would I actually SD for for No, 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 no. <laughs> if you are... Wow, you went right there as if you really wanted to have that discussion. <laughs> oh, that's just... <laughs> you did not wait in case... It, like, it wasn't like, oh, I knew you were going to do there. You're like, what? What? Am I ashamed that I would? <laughs> no, Justin, I'm not. <laughs> 
It's just a minor inconvenience, and then you get a delicious grilled cheese. Come on. If we are looking at the grand spectrum of S and D for things, <laughs> does grilled cheese is grilled cheese more honorable or more shameful shameful than doing it for money? Uh, I mean, I I. I, on your moral scale oh dude no it's all who cares it's like it, they, they uh this whole like exchange it's like that this act should be the equivalent of like giving a back rub it should just be <laughs> it should be <laughs> Let, brian you're you're doing a lot of a uh, lot of tooting right now I just need a better or worse uh, it, on, on your moral scale. It's is all, it better or worse it, it's, to take a grilled cheese for it or take money for it? Uh, it's the, I'd say the same. <laughs> that guy says something I can't repeat. All but right. It's really funny. <laughs> uh, hold up. But we actually we actually have one of our experts. Jackie Hearn was trying to call in. She, uh, call back, Jackie. Uh, look, I'm going to say it's the same. I'm going to say it's exactly the same. Oh, come on, Brian. This is like it, it. You can go either way, and it's interesting. You pick the only way that it's not interesting. I I failed. In my, I picked the one wrong choice. You're not. Wait. You're not. You can't make a moral stand on whether or not it is more honorable <laughs> to SD for money and not SD for grilled cheese. I mean, I would say I would say for money would be better because at least you're you're valuing yourself. Like like grilled cheese is like so. There we better go. Than that. All right. That's all I'm asking for. <laughs> all right, Jackie. What's going on? Hey, how's it going? Hey, Can you hear uh, me okay? Yeah, we're doing a show. What's up? How you doing, Yeah, Jackie? I know you are. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm so embarrassed. Actually, that's probably like the second most embarrassing thing I did because I saw everyone say how gross it was that there was cheese in my purse. Yes, it was gross, but, you know, I did read that Diamond Club book. That's a little bit more Wait embarrassing. Wait a minute. Jackie Hearn was the <laughs> anonymous contributor? This is a true story? <laughs> It is. I mean, you know, when you those things happen. I don't know. He liked to drive, so we went for a ride. I don't know how okay. that happened, okay. but oh wait, well, okay, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. let's <laughs> let's uh and pardon the euphemism, drill down on this. Uh, <laughs> so so was that a thing with you guys that he wanted to kind of just have you in public dressed in the sexy <laughs> nurse outfit? Uh, you maybe maybe I don't know, but like he said that he ordered something like a week before, and I'm like. Okay. And then, you know, he ordered it. He got it. And I was like, well, I guess I have to put it on. <laughs> now, is it like a nurse outfit or is it like a sexy vinyl nurse outfit? It, it was kind of like in between. So, like, that's why the cops were a little bit like, well, maybe this chick is just really weird. <laughs> so you could, like, actually go to work as a nurse conceivably in this? Boop. Yeah. If it was like 1940. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And uh, in in, uh, in okay. So and you honestly so, think uh, it was so the it, cheese? It's more. It's more like burlesque show nurse outfit. Not uh, like well, yeah, but not, porn I mean, star. Like, it, stuff wasn't hanging out. You know, like it was. You know, covered. But still, like you know, it was weird. And um, but yeah, I you know obviously the cops saw that and they you know so their first in instinct was well yeah they were having sex in the parking lot we need to like try make sure that that's not happening but the thing was is that you asked why didn't we just go to an hold apartment on, wait we a actually Jackie, lived Jackie. together in the same house pa pause it. In our, oh sorry hold on wait let, let's tell that last part again <laughs> go ahead <laughs> so she was saying yeah, you're they in the actually car lived together so, yeah oh, okay so yeah we actually lived together and our driver's license had the same address so, you know, like the cops were like, well, why didn't you just stay at home? And I looked at him and I'm like, yeah, why didn't we just stay at home? You like to drive so damn or, excuse me, you know, much that, you know. <laughs> Man. So that, now, that's hold on, wait. Happened. Let's get to this cheese weed situation, which, by the way, my favorite was their second self-titled album. You uh, know, girls, they have things in their purse. It just happens. Were you smoking, though? You had a pipe and you had the weed. Were, you're in a nurse outfit. Are you smoking in this abandoned... Uh, or in this, this parking lot? We probably would have within the next 10 minutes, but I didn't necessarily realize that I had brought it with me in a nurse costume 3 a.m. <laughs> at a university parking lot. That was dumb. Number one, it says something about you and your consumption of weed that you went anywhere without realizing that you brought it with you. <laughs> that is not the sign of somebody who just does it every once in a while. Hey, it's Number college, two, right? <laughs> you're not, okay, so you are in a parking lot 
with weed in your purse in a sexy outfit that was purchased for you for explicitly sexual purposes, and you neither start <laughs> banging or smoke weed. What yeah, are you people doing? Talking about the issues of the day? I think so, yeah. He was talking about work. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, but yeah, well I, I, all right. One final question, Jackie. Sure. Uh, on the moral scale... <laughs> Of S and D for things, is it more honorable to do it for money or for grilled cheese? <laughs> now keep in mind, uh, Kraft Singles <laughs> saved your life. That American yes. processed cheese. Oh my God! Can you imagine going to jail in a nurse costume? Oh, uh, dude, um, I almost went to know, jail. Yeah, soaking um, wet, wearing a skirt. Yeah, grilled cheese. Grilled <laughs> cheese. You would rather. So somebody comes up to you, two people independently say, "Yo." I SD'd for money. And then the other person says, yo, I SD'd for grilled cheese. You think better about the grilled cheese person than the money person. Well, you set it up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. We love you. All right. Love you guys. Uh, all right, man. We got, um, uh, oh, so, so what, is it secret or BS? Oh. <laughs> that's, that's the point uh, Brian, here. I think this one is absolutely true. I say it's a secret. I, I think it's BS. Um, then but, I'll go with you. Because if you think it's BS, then it's BS. Uh, yeah, but I'll, I'm wrong at everything. I'm always the worst at these games. 100% true? Are you kidding me? All right. That's... All right, wait. We went with you then. Yeah. So I was wrong. So, so far, chat realm's kicking Jeez. our butts. All right, this will be the last one. This will be the last one. I used to work in Saginaw before moving east. A couple of years ago, I flew back to consult on a project I had previously worked on. Hadn't been back there in eight years. Get to the job site, and I appeared with a guy who I could swear was my doppelganger. Looked just like me. Like a scruffy version of me. Talked like me, dressed like me. Had my old job. It was bizarre. But the weirdest thing is that we had both dated the same girl like ten years ago, and they had just gotten back together. Thing is... I talked with her on a fairly regular basis. She never mentioned this guy. Secret or BS? Can I can I, can I vote uh, for who cares? <laughs> can, I, can I vote for cool story, bro? <laughs> like that. That's uh, like... I think we should end stories like that with, uh, and then a dog chased me with a knife in its mouth. <laughs> I'm going to say, for the record, I don't care if this one's real or not, uh, but this uh, this one has a lengthy explanation. He says, Boosh, plot to the next episode, or the next generation episode, Second Chances. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. That's amazing. That is true. That is full-on win. Congratulations to whoever. I got a man, double points for that. If you're able to take the plot of something and put it right under our stupid faces, uh, it's another anonymous one. Dude, that's amazing. Uh, hey, man. Excellent. You want to check in on the uh, movie draft minute real quick? Uh, yeah, yeah. For the week of July 29th, 2013, I'm your host, Roberto Villegas. Man, this weekend was filled with crazy turmoil, quitting of careers, and heated discourse over the internet. Oh, and there are some movies released. Here's this week's scoreboard. Cargill's in 6th place with $362.4 million. Scott Johnson's in 5th place with $395.7 million. Tom Harris in 4th place with The Wolverine bringing in $53.1 million this week, bringing his total to $509.9 million. Sarah Lane's in 3rd place with $551.9 million. Justin Robert Young's in 2nd place with $630.6 million. And still in 1st place with a whopping $905 million. It's Brian Brushwood. And that is your movie draft minute for the week of July 29th, 2013. Oh, man. $400 million Smurfs 2, baby. <laughs> I believe, I believe <laughs> that Smurfs 2 will make $400 million. <laughs> Freaking amazing. Uh, hey, man, do we have any Hey, other can we talk about the, the big revelation on the movie draft? Of oh my god, the the that that Simpsons did it. Yes, exactly. Like how proud have we been of this game? And then we run across some article. I want to say it was like on Slate or some crap. Somebody give us a link to that article where not only did the Simpsons have it was the like gall Bloomberg to uh, was it? Not only did they yeah. have the gall to invent our game uh, independently, but then they had the gall to start playing it before we even invented it, which is like, I, I, I guess I didn't they have get a time a sense. Did, did it say definitively when they started? Like it, it made the point that it was like 
forever ago, but I didn't see exactly what I thought it, was. it said. I thought it said like four years ago or something like that. But but the weird part was like they say because four years would be that would be like a year before we did it. Because I mean, like what was odd was that like there was it, it's almost like an identical thing. It was insane. Well, because it wasn't just like the the you know you had the idea of of doing a a fantasy league and uh, you know and I had suggested the the hundred virtual bucks do it auction style and uh, you know we we sort of just put it uh, out there and then freaking like like that's exactly how they play and they're as crazy about it as we are. Yeah, uh, it is really insane. I really actually want uh, we should we should reach out to them and just be like. Yo, number one, because I feel like they're like the only people in the world that can understand <laughs> like what we go through. It, it, it's like it's crazy to think that like it's like as if we had set up dual like dual civilizations completely separate, and then like we can be like, so um, how do you guys handle tax collection? <laughs> like you know, we can just ask them about things. Business week right here. The Simpsons writers have a fantasy league of their own. Two years ago, a Fox executive walked into the writer's room, looked at the huge whiteboard sitting in front, and complimented the staff on having so many great episode ideas. They thanked the exec, waited until he left, and then cracked up. The whiteboard had nothing on it about Homer or Bart or anything else related to what Fox pays them to do. Instead, it was a list of summer movies and how much the staff thought each was likely to gross. They called this invention the Summer Box Office Fantasy Leagues. I think, you know, summer movie draft has a little catchier wing sound to it <laughs> uh and they're obsessed with it and it's very serious business uh although they're proud of their show blah 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 they uh basically love it uh the, the for the past five years they say man so the, and they do it they do it right in the time of april then they uh how many players do they have here each writer okay here we go each they what they do is they have like twenty writers and everyone pays. They use a hundred dollar uh, dollars to bid, but like they can split movies, right? So they have movie shares. So I guess you can co buy a movie with somebody. Yeah, man. Um, uh, Which I'm not. I'm not in love with, but I do think. Uh, but look at that. There, they even have these things, these flags dangling down. Two thousand nine. How close is that to when we did it? I think I think they might have. Wait, could could no? We they have? beat us. They definitely beat us. All right, but it's not by much. It's like by a year. That's amazing. That's because we've been playing at least for three years, right? Yeah. Well, and I thought. Uh, let's see. It's twenty thirteen. I think four years because we played. We first did a uh, BB live show before there was NSFW. No, 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 no. Is that right? No. Okay. Yeah. No, it was on NSFW. Okay. Uh, man, we're so dumb. <laughs> uh, yeah, but anyway, that's uh, congratulations. Uh, this April, oh, yeah, people are saying that it's because they have 20 people, so you kind of have to do splits if you have that many people playing, right? Um, you know, I'll tell you what, I kind of feel like also, and, and listen, uh, I was joking around about Smurfs. You, you won uh, this league, you are now, uh, you have one in a row, yep. uh, of the real leagues. Um, <laughs> okay. So uh, congratulations to you. You're you're back on the board. Yes. You're a two-time winner. <laughs> okay, fine. This is <laughs> uh, some might say that the that the winter draft matters, but that's fine. That's fine. The, I, I, uh, at this point, I, I believe uh, that is uh, De Liga El Wintero. You know what's great uh, is the is, the the, uh, the Mexican or Puerto Rican leagues uh, that we busy ourselves with. So have I, how many how many times have we played the summer? This was just the third time. I mean, the first one, like, what were the big movies? Like, Sex in the City two, right? Inception is what won it for me. So it's like I got Inception. Out, yeah. Uh, when did Inception come out? We're so dumb. Uh, Twenty ten. Twenty ten. So so yeah, this is our third year, which uh, which means I've won two thirds of all of the drafts there have ever been. Uh, it's, it's good for you, Brian. <laughs> okay, fine. It's good by you. <laughs> Did a good job. Uh, hey, uh, you got anything to promote or anything? People are saying it's the fourth. See, that's what I thought. No, no, Sarah won the second. Okay, it yeah. was you, Sarah, me, you. Okay, got it. Then that is that is what it is. So yeah, 2010, yeah. 2011, 2012, 2013. Got it. All right. So they only beat us by a year. Apparently, apparently. How insane is that? Simpsons did it, assholes. <laughs>
Simpsons did it. God damn it. <laughs> I can't believe it. Uh, all uh, right. Look, let's let's go ahead and wrap everything up. Um, so there's that. Um, you got anything to promote, Justin Robert Young? Uh, Brian, ruin him. Uh, we 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 invented it together. We uh we drink it because we love it. Uh, in all in all seriousness, like we've done a lot of stuff that's been really really crazy uh or like awesome. On this show, we've really loved it, and it's all been because of the collaboration with the audience. It's all been because of Chat Realm, because of Diamond Club. Uh, walking into a place where they're bottling a real wine was that amazing? Because we came up with stuff is one of the weird. Like I said to Brett, we were doing a game the day before, and I'm like, "Hey, uh, it's kind of awesome." Uh, they bumped the thing back. I gotta go see the wine get bottled, and it was just odd saying. Those words, like, like, and, uh, and there was no punchline at the end of them. Those were just functional words to communicate a real idea. Yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, Cabo is saying Simpsons b- bottled the first batch of Ruinum twenty years ago, uh, <laughs> which is, is God damn it. Uh, so there we go. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, it really is amazing. I hope everybody who gets it this week use hashtag Ruinum. Uh, tell everybody uh, what you think of it. Uh, I'm so pumped about it, Bri. I, you have you have no idea, dude. That's awesome. Uh, real quick plug: next week, I believe we're gonna have a very special music guest. Unrelatedly, uh, hey, did you know that uh, Jason Howell had a Kickstarter for his two album? weeks? I think two weeks, not next week. Two weeks. Oh, two weeks. Right. Okay. But yes, unrelated. <laughs> Do you a favor, die to fire. You gotta say, see you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. There, there you go. <laughs> <laughs>